Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily analyze large sets of data using Microsoft Excel's database functions. Now, I already have it set up here, and this is an example that I'll show you how it actually works. And then in just a few seconds here, we'll actually step through how to create what you're seeing here. Now you can follow along by uh, downloading customer list on my website luthermaddy.com on my Excel page. But in order to do database analysis and use the database functions, we have to have our data set set up as a database, which means we have all the data pertaining to each record in one row and we have column headings representing the fields. Now these are the fields that I can select my analysis by or do if they are numeric fields actual computations. Now on the left you're going to see another duplicate of most of the field names. These are the field names that are important to me. Excel is going to call this the criteria range. This is where I put in the specifications of who I want to count or I want the average purchase of or the max purchase or the min purchase. Now right now there are no specifications here at all. There's no specified city, state, zip, age, gender, or last purchase amount. And so my analysis comes up with all of the records. So how many? Well, there's 421 because I don't have any specifications. Now, if I put in a specification, these numbers are going to change because I've used database functions, which again, I'll show you in just a second. I know there are some records in Utah here, so I'm going to type UT in the state criteria range. And just as soon as I do that, notice that my numbers change. I don't have 421 records in Utah, I only have 46. The average purchase of the last purchase amount from the customers who living in, live in Utah is 64.98, and you see the highest purchase and the lowest purchase. Now I can add additional specifications and filter or narrow down this analysis if I want to. Say, for instance, I'm only interested in the males that live in Utah. So I can type in male in the gender area of the criteria range. And now I have even a smaller subset that I'm working with here. Instead of uh, 421, there's only six males that live in Utah in my list. The average purchase for the males in Utah is 8350. Now, if I'm done, I, I don't want to analyze that anymore for a particular field. I can just delete it. Now, let's assume, though, that I'm also interested in the individuals that live in Utah and that are members of AARP like I am. So I'm going to put in here greater than 50. And as soon as I press enter, now I have narrowed down my analysis. There are 22 individuals in this list that live in Utah who are greater than 50 years old. And I could then further narrow it down by gender and last purchase amount or over a greater amount or whatever I wanted to do. OK, so it's very easy to use. It's also very easy to set up. So hang on for just a second, and I'll bring up a blank uh, sheet that you can actually, again, follow along if you download customer list on my website, and we'll build the database functions and the criteria range to show you how you can do analysis on your own data sets. All right, so here we have the database set up. Uh, we don't see the criteria area that I was showing you just a second ago, and we don't also have the questions uh, that I was asking in my analysis, nor do we have the formula set up. But again, as I mentioned before, you have to have this set up as a database, and if it is, we can use the database functions in Excel to do some basic analysis. Now, we have to have that condition or the criteria range that I mentioned earlier. And that needs to be a copy of the fields that you want to put in specifications for. So in this case, I am probably not going to put in specifications for address and last name and first name and ID, but I very likely could for city, state, age, gender, and the last purchase amount. So I'm going to copy that over to an area over here. And this will become my criteria range. When I use database functions, I have to tell Excel where the database lies and where the conditions or the specifications are. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and put in the questions that I'm going to be asking here. Remember, I'm going to be starting with uh, how many? And uh, then I'll go ahead and put in average purchase. And how I'm doing this will be the same, whether it's the uh, average function, the count function, or as I had in the previous example, the max and the min. OK, so now I'm ready to go ahead and put in a database function to count. 
Now all the database functions start with D and so uh, if you're familiar with the count function it's going to be the D count. If you're familiar with the average function it's going to be the D average. I like to the, go ahead and use uh, what I call a little cheater here um, where I can go in and, and look at all the functions that are available to me with the database functions here. So I can say I have the D average, the D count, uh, the D get, max, min, way more than what I'm going to be talking about. I'm just going to be talking about a couple uh, basics here. I want the D count. Now, one of the uh, other advantages, especially as you're learning when you are using this, is it kind of gives you a helper to know how the syntax goes. It puts the commas in there for you, and you don't have to worry about that. So I'll click OK. And so now it wants to know where my database lies. Now, my database starts at A1. It needs to include the field names. It's going to go over here to column J and it's going to go all the way down to row 422. And so my database area is A1 through J422. The next thing we need here is the field that we're going to be doing analysis on. And it makes sense to really be doing the counting and the averaging on the same field. So I'm going to click here at J1 so it understands that I want analysis, which in this case is just a count, but I'm also going to want min and max and average of the amount of the last purchase. And I could also do this with the age if I wanted the average age. Then the next thing is to specify where the criteria range is. The criteria range, again, it must match the field names exactly, and it does in this case. I don't, again, don't have all the fields. So it is going to include the field names, but also the row below, just one row below in this case. You do want to be very careful and not uh, choose that second row. If you do, that becomes an OR row. And if there's nothing there, you're going to end up with all 421 no matter what. So the criteria range is the field names and the row below. So now I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I end up with 421. And the reason I've ended up with 421, as I mentioned just a minute ago, is because there are no specifications here. Now before I put in specifications, I'm going to go ahead and do one more here with the D average. So I'll start the process again using uh, the helper to go to more functions and I go to the database functions and I'm going to choose the D average right at the top there. We click OK. Uh, the database is going to be the same. I don't remember exactly what they were so I'll highlight them again. I am using kind of a shortcut here. I'm using the shift end and down and that takes me all the way to row 422. My field again will be at the very top it'll be the uh, amount of the last purchase again in J1 and then my criteria range is going to be the copy of the field names and the one extra row below, again not two, unless you want to use an OR. I click OK and now I have an average for all of the records, all 421. Let's go ahead and format that as currency just for fun. Now let's assume in this case I'm interested in Idaho. I just type ID in the criteria range and that narrows down the list. If I put in Idahoans that are greater than 50, again a narrowed list. Well let's go ahead and look at that function again just so you can see uh, how it works here again. It is D count, the database range that includes the field names, the field that you're doing the analysis on, and the criteria area which is the field names and the row below. And really it's that easy. Uh, if you've got your data set up in a database and you have your criteria range it's easy to do uh, some basic statistical analysis. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please like it. Think about subscribing. And uh, as I mentioned, if you want to follow along, just go to my website. There's other resources there as well, luthermaddy.com. Thank you very much.